There we go. All right. All right. Good? Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you for showing up today. Um, for those of you who've been here before and listened to my talk, uh, welcome back. For those of you who are new, welcome. Um, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Wayne Stamball, and I am the project leader of KeyCAD. Uh, this year, I'm going to deviate a little bit from my normal State of the Union. I'm going to do a little bit of uh, the major features, new features of the upcoming version 5 release. It won't be a complete um, feature presentation because of time. I'm just going to hit the highlights, things that will probably be most interesting to most people. Um, before I get started with the d demo, though, I have some uh, overview project news. If you're wondering why I'm wearing the DigiKey shirt, this just happened last night. And it, I want to say thank you to Javier and the folks at CERN. It, it was a two-week uh, fight to try to get this done. But DigiKey, as of yesterday, late yesterday, wi wired to the, did, the KeyCAD uh, donations fund, the single biggest um, donation in KeyCAD's history. So that's a really big deal for us. Um, kudos, yes, thank you. Kudos to DigiKey. Uh, it, 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 it took a bit of work to make it all happen, but um, thanks to the people that made it happen. Um, DigiKey sent me these uh, really nice, you're a board layout guy? Yeah, of course, you don't get out for Dodge for free. Um, these really nice little board rulers, they're excellent. If you're a board layout guy, these things are really handy. I've had one for years, but they, make, they get these out at trade shows. If you want one, please take one so I don't have to drag them back to the United States with me because I had to drag them here. <laughs> Go ahead and pass them around. It's fine. Um, so, so keep, keep, <laughs> keep DigiKey in mind when you're doing your board layouts. You need parts for your boards. Keep DigiKey in mind. Yeah, just, just here. Just, here, just pass the packs around. Just pass, yeah. Um, while, while not directly, while not directly um, part of KeyCAD source, one of the things that's been going on in the background, if, you, if you're not real familiar with the project or don't keep up with it, is the symbol footprint and 3D model libraries are really, really beginning to mature. So in this next release, you're going to see a huge change in the modeling libraries, or in all the libraries. So um, you can go onto the website. I'm not going to do that now. But there are links there that allow you. We now update the website real time, so as commits are made to the repos for the libraries, the website gets updated to you if you're want to track that and not interested in learning to use Git to pull them down. That's a great resource for you. Um, we've had a significant uptick in user interest. Uh, I got an email from Jean-Pierre, the project founder, about two months ago. He's very close with you, the folks at UCAMCO. And they, apparently they do either one of their subsidiaries, I think one of their subsidiaries actually produces boards. Currently, all boards, over 50% of the boards that, are, that they get with the X2 extensions that have the, um, the uh, tool used to create the Gerber files embedded in it, over 50% of those are now KeyCAD. So now, granted, not all tools do that, but of all the tools, of all the board orders that they get now, over, 50, over half of them are KeyCAD. So that's, I find that rather interesting that we've grown quite a bit there. Um, if you weren't part of the Hackaday chat, there was a chat. Uh, what was that, about two months ago, um, at Hackaday I.O. The very first one I did a year ago, I think we had about, I want to say, 60 or 70 people at that one, and that was chaotic. There was uh, over 170 people at this one, and it was just completely out of control. If you want to go back and look at it, there's the, log, the, the, the chat logs there. Um, we also have a couple of new developers that, we've, that have been contributing significant amounts of um, code compared to the usual suspects that have been with the project for quite a long time. That's, that's interesting and, and helpful for me as a developer because as my role as the project leader increases, my time to be able to actually code goes down proportionally. So it, it, it's one of those things that's nice to have some extra hands on board. So, Okay, enough with that. We're going on with the demo. Probably the first thing that you're... This is going to be really interesting to... Um, current Eagle users and ex-Eagle users. One of the things that mode got driven, as many of you know, is the Autodesk changing of the licensing for Eagle. So one of the things we do now is we actually have a direct import feature for uh, Eagle projects, and it does a very good job. Um, I have an Arduino board here that I 
grabbed off online. So you go into import project, Eagle CAD, and I'm going to go, let's see, KeyCAD test projects. And here's our Arduino board and schematic. And this, this is right from their website. I just downloaded this and, uh, and the source archive, their source archive and unzipped, unzipped it here. And here it is. So I can either click the board or the schematic. It doesn't matter. It's going to ask me where do I want to put, put it. In this case, you know, you probably don't want to put it in the same folder because it's going to overwrite the schematic file. So, you probably don't. so I put it in a separate folder here called KeyCab Conversion. I say go. It's going to take a second here to do the conversions, and it's done. It's going to complain. It's going to give, a, give you a list of issues when it, of things that don't map directly to KeyCAD objects. Um, most of this is just layering differences between us and them. But, oh, now I don't want to save it. I say, okay. And there's the board. It's unfortunately the resolution of this display is not the best that's going to make this demo, but there's the Arduino board. And of course, I can fill it, fill the zones. And there's the finished board. And this is, this is direct from Arduino. And now, this is a KeyCAD. This is actually a KeyCAD board file. I can save that. And if you look, I also have the schematic as well. Oh. There's, oh, there's the full schematic. So now some things don't quite come out perfect. The text is, tends to be a little small oh, and whatnot. Uh, the, some of the title blocks don't come out quite right. So there's still, it's not perfect. But this is now a full-blown KeyCAD project with all the libraries copied over from Eagle. So you'll have all the footprint libraries, the symbol libraries. They'll all be KeyCAD equivalents of what your original project was. So you have, I think that's really important. That's probably the single biggest front-facing feature as far as um, users go. So now that we have, I've also added some stuff that allow you to set the configuration paths in KeyCAD. We use some configuration paths internally. You can do that directly now in KeyCAD instead of having to set them on your environment variables through the command line. Hopefully, you shouldn't have to use these. If, our, if, if KeyCAD is packaged correctly, all these should be in the right default places. But on some platforms, there are some issues there, so you can get these locally. We also included um, bitmap scaling. For those of you who are lucky enough to have high DPI monitors right now, in the past, KeyCAD hasn't scaled well. So your, 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 your bitmaps will look on the toolbar buttons will look really tiny on high, D, high resolution displays. We now have scaling. It's not perfect, but it's a good short-term gap and, or short stop gap measure until the next release, version 6. Um, the other thing we have done is the ubiquitous new, you'll see a few new icons up there in the toolbar buttons. Those are come at every version, <laughs> um, not without great, uh, great effort, believe me. Um, one other change that's going to happen is with V5 is instead of the GitHub, GitHub plugin, which we currently use, will no longer be the default. The footprint libraries will be installed on your hard drive locally. You can still use the GitHub plugin, um, but if you're interested in the newer footprints, you probably want to change your global footprint library table to point to the new footprints on your machine because the GitHub libraries that we're currently using are going to be um, they're basically deprecated. They'll be, we'll keep them as they are for historical purposes, but the new development is being all done in a single Git repo. It makes it easier for our library development folks. So that's, that's a big front-facing change for KeyCAD. Talk a bit about the schematic editor. Um, one of the biggest new, big new feature, and it's been talked about before, but I'll just do a quick demo of it, is the spice simulation. We now have integrated NG spice simulation into um, KeyCAD. So oh, let me find. Oh, where is it? Oh, I think it dropped, did it? No, there it is. OK, we now have uh, this handy demo. It's just a simple rectifier. And you go into the Tools menu and run Simulator. There's a simulator, you run it. If you want to look at a signal, 
you can do an at you can do it this way if you know the signal names or you can also use the the probe tool and you can pick a node let's say i want to see the current i want to I'm going to go back over to the <laughs> simulator tool uh, okay where is it hiding come on oh didn't it pick it did i not get the node i may not have this works much better with a dual monitor trust me there we go. Let's pick at node. And then you can see it selected the node, so you get it. So that's, so that's full NG splice integration. And as long as you have the models for your symbols, um, you can hint you got that. OK. That's the biggest thing in EE schema. But there's a lot of other changes as well. Um, for those of you who've been using the board editor for years, you will recognize this. Now symbols are managed the same way. Instead of the old library list that we had, which had issues because if you had two uh, symbol names with, in, the, in different libraries, the library ordering was crucial to get the right part. That goes away. That's all been fixed. That's gone now. And now we have a common tool for managing footprint and symbol libraries. There's not, it's not different between the two editors. Um, we merged the options into a single, there used to be like three or four different option dialogues in KiCad. We've merged them all into a single option dialogue now. You can get to them this way. It makes life a little bit easier. It's handy. Um, some of the other things that are rather interesting here is we now have node highlighting. So if you, on a simple project like this, like this it doesn't make much of a difference, but you can now highlight a node What's interesting about this is, if you have the board open, board editor open, this is why I can't really demo this, and you have it in the highlight mode in the board embo, this node will get highlighted and centered on the board, on your board. So if you have a, you know, two, dual mark, yeah. So it's, it's back and forth. And, and it works the opposite way, too. If you're in the board editor and you click on that node and you have the schematic editor open, that node on the schematic editor will get highlighted. So that's new. So there's um, more, you, a little bit you, more useful tools for people who lay out boards. Um, another big front-facing front change that you'll see is the symbol library editor. And one of, the, one of the weaknesses in KiCad was always library management with the tool. Now, we haven't upgraded the footprint editor tool yet like this, but the new, this is, it's nice is, Selecting libraries or parts to modify or adding new parts is just a simple matter of here are all your library. Now you see all your libraries in this left pane. I can grab a library and I can start editing my um, footprint or my symbol right in the um, without having to go through. Now you had to pick a library, pick a, um, a symbol, and then start editing. And then and it also it also queues up now multiple changes. So you can save them all at once rather than having to save them individually. So there's a lot of changes to this. Probably take a little bit get, getting used to if you're used to the old way of doing things. But this is a nice change. One, probably maybe one of the biggest UI changes, I think, that we've made in the most recent version of KiCad. Um, we have graphic line support now. So if you've if you got to have pretty colors and, and lines. Oh. Let's see here. Oh my, let's see, place. Uh, sorry, you got debugging mode. There's a, an assertion. That's actually from WX widgets, by the way. That's not my assertion. Um, so I want to draw a line here somewhere on my. I can draw a line here quickly and I can edit it. We now support different line modes. And if you don't like the color, you can pick a color. You got a full instead of the previously defined colors, you have a full color picker now. You also have line types, so if you have to have dotted or solids or dash dots, they're they're all there now. So you can see the different there's different line types now. Um, that's only available in the symbol editor or the schematic editor right now. It's not available in the board editor at the moment. Um, the board editor, there's been quite a few changes to the board editor. That was the one that got the most love the last time around. 
no, there's right, there's no board editor here. Let's let me open a different project here. Ah. So the board editor got some significant changes this time around. Um, one real handy change is uh, transparency. So in, when you're in the um, in the accelerated, what we call it modern now, in the what we used to call OpenGL, you actually can have transparent layers. So if I want to change the layer, say here's the bottom layer. Let's turn off the. You can actually see see there see the layer transparency turned on, right here, in this. Uh, Net so it makes so if you're looking at stacks of you know complex boards with multiple stacks you can set the transparency to each layer and it makes life easier. The other thing that's rather handy is we now have a new view tool a new view view. So if you flip the board, this is now looking at the same board flipped and it's you know, now you're now you now you're looking at it from the back to the front. I know traditionally most board editors are laid out when you look through it you always look through the front side and you look through the board to the back layer. So the back layer is obviously always mirrored, which makes, so we just provided a tool to flip everything 100, you know, mirror, basically flip it 180 degrees. Now you're looking at the front side mirrored. And this is actually the back side of the board. So it does make it a little easier for editing. Just a handy feature that we added to this one. Um, one of the things that you'll find that's nice here that I, well, I'm not gonna be able to show just because of the single view um, we now export directly to step file. In the past, it's been a third-party tool. It, we now do direct export to step. So when you export your board, if you have step models, and it works two, one of two ways. You can either use step models in the board. So you, when you look at the 3D view, um, you can actually look at the board. So here's one, this is a step model here. If I export this, that connector will be on the board, on the step model. In the past, it was just, you had to define them in a different, it was a, obviously a macro tool that you had to set up right to do it. Now it's all transparent. So if I go into the board editor here, and I do export step, these these will be the all the step files will be in there. The other nice thing it does too is if you continue to use the old VRML files models, if there's an equivalent step file in the same folder that where your VRM is, VRL, ah, VRML file is, it will export the step automatically. So basically the name has to be the same, just the step extension and the step file. So that's a big plus. Because a lot of people do mechanical work like me who use it. Um, there's a, we have a 3D model, I'm running out of time here. We now have support for 3D models. Um, we have a viewer, so you can actually look at, before we just, you just had to assign it a uh, 3D model file and you had to go back and forth and look at it to get the, the spacing and the sizing right. That's already taken care of manually. Um, there's now a distance measuring tool, which is handy. If you're a person that has to do stuff, you can go over here and I bet you it's not going to show up. Is it because it's not enough resolution? Oh, I didn't think about that. <laughs> and it's not on the toolbar. Yeah, there's a note to sell. Put that on the toolbar. No, I can't get to it because it's down here in the toolbar. But there's now a measuring tool. So you click between points, it'll draw out the graticals in scale, and it'll be proportional to however far you're zoomed in. That's a rather handy thing to have. Um, we changed the, oh, the bitmaps. There's now anti-aliasing bitmaps. You know when you're in the board view and you see all the, these, the names, the file names, or the, the node names, they're not, you can anti-alias them if you have the graphics horsepower to pull it off. Go ahead and enable those. You'll get nicer looking fonts. Um, we have object selection filtering, so you can kind of hold the shift key or the control key or the shift key and select individual parts. And that only works in the GAL canvas or the modern canvas um, instead of having to select things one at a time. For the Gerber file viewer, um, I'm not going to show you that. It's pretty straightforward. Um, we now have, uh, well, this is the last of my time, a modern 
we 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 actually ported that over up until just recently. It was only legacy canvas over, only. It's now been ported to OpenGL and Cairo, which is the modern canvas. Um, th they will load with um, the Gerber X2 extensions, and also we have, there's currently underway by the Gerber folks to come up with a new file called a job file format, which basically is a gra a, a definition of your entire board. Um, stack up things like um, all the different layers, how they're stacked up, the, the widths, the, the distances between each layer. There's a, what's called a, a project or a job file, which you can send to your board house assuming they support that. So you don't have to you know, tell them the layer stack up and everything. So now if, if you create a uh, Gerber files with a, job, a Gerber job file, it'll load, you just load the one file, it'll load the entire Gerber stack into the Gerber viewer. So you don't have to, you know, load them one at a time, put them in the order that you want them in. They'll be loaded in the correct order. Uh, well, right now it's 16, no, 32 and 32. 32 copper and 32 others, but the, some of the others are defined, like the solder mask and the silk screen layers are predefined. So, uh, sure. I mean, do you need more than 32 copper layers? 48 planes? Okay. I mean, we, I mean, we've talked about it. We've talked about just making it infinite and, and editable, but right now it's, it's, limited to, it's limited to 30, 32 and 32. Okay. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, I apologize. I wish I could have done a better job, but given the limitations of my display here, it's the best I can do. Um, I want to say thank you to all the people who've helped develop KiCad. Um, it's a big job. It's a big code base. Um, I, I don't think... The contributions aren't, you know, the contributions are uh, really nice to have. I appreciate all the help. I want to thank everybody who donated to KeyCAD, especially, um, oh, I forgot to take this. I got one more thing I got to do here. <laughs> and this is for Svetan back. Is he back here? There he is. Yeah. He, yeah, there he is. You have a cable here. Oh, see, I, I meant to do this earlier, and you're going to ask me, well, why, why did you do that? You, you probably understand the, the, the DigiKey one. Well, See, Svetan's going to get, do a talk about using KeyCAD to lay out the board for the, I'm assuming, the Terry's laptop, right? So if you weren't here four years ago when he did his, uh, inter, his uh, view of using KeyCAD, we got beat over the head. So I'm doing this. Give, so I'm hoping he goes, shows, shows me a little love as well. So um, thank you for your interest in KeyCAD. I'm, I'm always surprised that as many people show up here as do. I'm, I, I expect to come here one year and nobody's going to show up because they're just tired of hearing what I have to say. So thank you for coming, and a special thanks to Javier and the folks at CERN. They make this happen, this dev room and all the presentations that happen here today. So a special thanks to them because it's all possible because of them. So thank you. Oh. Oh, you got it in the middle. The, the question, say the question. Oh, because, yes, there was, yes. Okay, the question was there were still some uh, air wires, some nets. I think that was, there's probably some noting issues. It may be have something to do, I think it might have something to do with the fill. It, it may be that the fill, so you will, it's not a perfect conversion. So when I refilled the zones, the, um, it's possible that there were some missing connections there from the zone refill. So you may have to go back in and you have to keep an eye, you're going to have to look carefully because when we fill a zone and when they fill a zone, it may not map one to one. You may not get the exact same polygon that you get from, um, from uh, Eagle. So you ha it's, it's not going to be slam dunk on every project, but the, 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 the level of import and the quality is really good. It was, it's really a, a nice feature for folks trying to convert. And that's true of any EDA. I, I've never used a PD, piece of EDA software that imported somebody else's that did it perfect. There's always, there's always subtle differences that you just have to, as an engineer, you just have to look for. So when are we getting the release? Uh, the question is, when are we going to get the release? And I meant to say something this about this at the beginning, and I didn't, because I've been already asked about five times today. We're in pretty good shape right now. The goal was to actually do the branch and RC1 before today. It didn't happen, so we're close. I would say no more than 
two, three weeks tops, we get RC1 